Now let us look at the next mechanism and this next mechanism is related to the strict alteration. Till now we have already seen the mechanisms which are where we are going to use where, where we used the lock variable and we used uh, you know test and set instructions test and set instructions right so now here we are going to see a new mechanism which is related to the strict alteration strict alteration now you'll see why do we actually use strict alteration and uh, what is the benefit of using strict alteration okay so in this strict alteration this is only a two process solution it is only a two process solution it cannot work for more than two processes right see we can design the strict alteration method for more than two processes also but here the kind of strict alteration which I am teaching you is related to the two process solutions only okay so here for the processes we are going to use two different codes this this code is for the process p1 and this code will be for the process p2 and there will be a shared variable again and that shared variable will be the lock variables this is the lock variable assuming that initial value of the lock variable is zero initial value of the lock variable is zero. or better way is let us assume instead of lock variable let us uh, make it like this that will that will make more sense this is process p0 this is process p1 and this the name of this variable is a turn variable see I can use lock variable it doesn't matter but uh, I just wanted to make it more you know make it look like it is making more sense now when I'm saying turn is equal to zero that means there's a it's a turn of p0 process and p0 process can enter into the critical section and when I'll say the turn is equal to one that means p1 process can enter into the critical section okay so how will it work is for p0 process we are going to do while while turn is not equal to zero commas and then we are going to do turn equal to one so we can make turn is equal to one so this is this is the critical section so we are going to make turn is equal to one so better is instead of turn is equal to one instead of using turn is equal to one here we cannot use something like this we are going to do enter into the critical section then in the exit section this is the entry section actually this is the entry section in the exit section we can make turn is equal to 1 this is the code which is used by the process p0 and there's a code which is used by the process p1 that will be something like this while turn is not equal to 1 this is the entry section and then we enter to the critical section and then we are going to make in the exit section turn is equal to zero turn is equal to zero now this code this code is used in the strict alteration method and what is the benefit of using this code that is that, that itself is very interesting see in this code we are going to assume that we have only two processes and we are going to tell that only at one time only one process can enter into the critical section only one process can enter into the critical section so if the value of the term is zero that means the process p0 can enter but if the value of the turn variable is one that means p1 can enter just just take this scenario what will happen here the value of turn variable is zero now if p1 process process try to come you will see this code while turn is not equal to one right the value of turn is zero and zero is not equal to one therefore this condition is true and because this condition is true and we have a semicolon here we will rotate here only that means the p1 process will rotate here within this while loop only it will not it will not be able to pass this while loop unless we make the value of turn is one and here if the value of turn is zero then the p0 process came it checked while turn is not equal to zero while turn is not equal to zero but the value of turn is zero therefore this condition failed because this condition is failed so we will come out of this while loop and we will enter the critical section assuming now p0 process is inside the critical section p0 process is inside the critical section okay 
Now, if P1 process wants to come inside the critical section, then P1 process will not be able to come because still the value of turn is 0. It can only enter if P0 process will come out of the critical section and in this exit section, the P0 process is making the value of turn as 1. So as soon as P0 process will come out of the critical section, it will execute the code in the exit section and it will make the value of the turn variable as 1. So now the turn variable value is 1. So that, that's how this is going to turn. So now, now P0 is not inside the critical section. Now, if P1 comes, P1 can see the value of turn is equal to 1 and this condition is false. So P1 will come out of this while loop and P1 can enter inside the critical section. Now at the same time, if P0 tries to come, P0 cannot come because of this condition. That means uh, this condition will always be true till P1 cannot come till p1 is inside the critical section as soon as p1 execute the code of exit section then only the value of turn variable will be 0 otherwise it will be 1 and till now till till the time it is 1 then you can see p0 cannot enter into the critical section p0 will be busy in waiting in the while loop so it is constantly knocking knock knock let me enter knock knock let me enter you can see the p0 process will try to execute the while loop only and it will not be able to come out of this while loop okay this is what will happen now you can see not identify is it is the solution correct will there be any issues or will there be any problems with this particular solution and this solution is uh, you know which is strict alteration now for any solution to be correct we need to follow the four conditions number one the first condition which we need to follow is it should be uh, following the condition of mutual exclusion it should follow the condition of mutual exclusion it should follow the condition of mutual exclusion. Second, the condition which it should follow is the condition of progress. Is the condition of progress. The third condition which is important here in this case is the condition of condition of bounded waiting. Condition of bounded waiting. And the fourth condition is architecture neutrality. Architecture neutrality. Architecture neutrality. Now these two are the primary conditions and these two are the secondary conditions. Now let us check the primary condition. The first condition is mutual exclusion. See this program. Do you think it is following the condition of mutual exclusion? Is it, will it be able to follow mutual exclusion? That means at one time only one process can enter the critical section. You can see, we can have preemption at every line. You can see uh, as, as soon as we execute the while loop, we can have a preemption here. After the critical section, we have a, we can have a preemption here and so on. We can have preemption at any line. You can see this this strict alteration method is actually following the condition of uh, mutual exclusion. Only one process can enter the enter into the critical section at a time. So this is true. So mutual exclusion is passed. Now is it following the condition of progress? Is progress followed? Progress. Progress means if there's a process outside the critical section. It, it is not inter interested in the enter into entering into the critical section and if some other process wants to enter into the criti critical section then the outside process should not stop that process to enter inside the critical section now you can see right now there's a turn of one that means only p1 process can enter the critical section now assuming that assuming a scenario that p1 process it's the turn of p1 process and p1 pro process do not want to enter at all P1 is not interested in into entering the critical section, but P0 wants to enter into the critical section. So what will happen? P0 cannot enter unless P1 comes out, but P1 is not even interested in into entering. Therefore, P1, P0 cannot enter. So P1 is stopping P, P0 to enter inside the critical section. Therefore, here you can see a progress, a process which is not interested to enter into the critical section is stopping a progress which is interested in entering the critical section therefore you can see the progress is not followed progress is not followed so if the primary conditions are filled then we cannot check the we don't check the secondary condition but let us assuming that here we are going to check the secondary conditions also so next condition is bounded waiting is bounded waiting followed bounded waiting means if there are some processes there should be a bound on waiting that at at most how much you should have you should wait to get your chance you can see if for example there's a process p1 which is coming and there's a process p0 and even if the priority of p1 is high still there's a bound on waiting for p0 that p0 only have to wait till only till uh, 
P1 go to the critical section and comes out. That it, it it only has to wait for the one process to enter into the critical section and then come out. So there's a bound on waiting that you don't have to wait infinitely. Right, so you can see bounded waiting is also followed. And architecture neutrality obviously it is followed because it is it does this solution does not require any support from the operating system as well as it does not require any support from the hard hardware. It, it does not require any support from the operating system and the hardware, therefore the architecture neutrality condition is also followed. Okay, so see there's a there's a problem, progress, progress is not followed. So we have to provide a mechanism through which the progress we can we can guarantee that progress should also be followed. Now let us look at uh, the next mechanism where uh, we can see the progress is also followed. 